Hello, I'm Dr. Deepak Bhatt for ACC.org, and I'm here with my two good friends, Dr. Roxana Moran and Dr. George Vetterman. And we're here at TCT day two, and this is our wrap up covering some of what we thought was hot. So let's start with Prague 17. There's a lot of excitement and interest around left atrial appendage occlusion. The amulet device just got approved in the US. The Watchman's already been here. Watchman Flex is out now. So Roxana, can you just give us a quick recap of what PROG-17 is, what these most recent results from that trial are, and what do they mean? Thank you, Deepak. This was a really, uh, to me, really interesting trial because we um, are actually, for the first time, evaluating a left atrial appendage closure, multiple left atrial appendage closure, uh, devices against a direct oral anticoagulant. As everyone knows, in patients with AFib, the, um, the previous trials were against warfarin, and I think we all know that NOACs do better, and so this was important. And this particular um, study included those patients with non-valvular AF who were at high risk. Uh, they either had to have a history of bleeding requiring an intervention or a history of a cardioembolic event or a a uh, high CHADS, BASC, or has bled score. Um, this was the, uh, and their composite endpoint for a non-inferiority endpoint uh, assessment and uh, now out to three years. I think it's important to know what that composite was, which is stroke or a TIA, systemic embolization, clinically relevant bleeding, cardiovascular death, or significant periprocedural or device-related complication. So a pretty large endpoint. And uh, what they showed uh, down the line with 400 randomized patients over a period of three years, a, a non-inferiority that remained durable beyond the one year uh, uh, for uh, the P for non-inferiority was 0 0.006. So in an intention to treat analysis showing a really good outcome for left atrial appendage compared to NOACs. And uh, what they did show over, over uh, uh, regarding the um, cardiovascular death or uh, even stroke or TIA, when they separated that, they really didn't show a difference. They both looked quite good. And um, when you look at bleeding, uh, there was uh, less bleeding with left atrial appendage closure because they only received um, a three month of dual antiplatelet therapies, et cetera. So I think Overall, this is good news for left atrial appendage uh, devices. Obviously, we need uh, larger studies, and there's one underway. So I'm, I'm really thrilled about this. Great. George, what was your take on this study? Well, I, I think it's a good study. I think it's important to have data. I, I'm bothered, at least, by the fact there were two devices used. And, and so we don't really know... Uh, is it just closure of the appendage or is there one device markedly better than the other? And I think we need to know that information because it might be that one of these devices is really great and the other one isn't. And that would uh, be very important in terms of uh, choosing devices and long-term results. So that's my big concern. I think it's great. we got a trial. We need bigger, uh, we need trials approaching this a little bit differently. And of course, in the long run, there's going to be the question about, about whether you can actually, with a really good device, reduce your need for anticoagulation, which would be really great. But I mean, I think it's also important that these are in high risk. This is not for everyone. I, and I think it's a really <laughs> important thing. It's, it's for those really high risk bleeding patients, those who had, uh, you know, these High chad, I believe I'm. I don't even look at the has blood score. A high chads vat score, really high chads vat score, equals a high bleeding risk, especially if you had <laughs> a bleeding in the past. And so, in my mind, that's a good option. And and we, I mean, I think when you show the non inferiority, we didn't see a signal of harm. So it looks like you know. It, I mean, I'm not saying that the devices are all created equal. I I agree with you, Dr. Vetrovac, but I think we need uh, we need larger trials. But this is this is good for this high risk population. Yeah, oh, I agree I, with you I, both. I, I, I think there's you know data that's head to head comparisons even at this TCT. But let's move on to stop DAP ACS uh, two or stop DAP two ACS. I might have mixed up that acronym, but it was a, a couple of different stop DAP trials that were pulled together. So Roxana, can you just dissect to us exactly what was presented and what the clinical implications yeah. are? First of all, these, this is a, a, an incredible study uh, group uh, from Japan. 
uh, wonderful investigators, and they are looking at clopidogrel monotherapy after one month of DAPT following PCI. And here at TCT, uh, they've already presented the Stop DAPT 2 trial that we saw uh, uh, in ACC 2020. Stop DAPT 2 ACS was presented at ACC 2021. Uh, and here at TCT, we're seeing stop DAP2 total cohort, all of the patients who were part of this. What's important for everybody to understand is that the stop DAP2 ACS borrowed patients from stop DAP2 trial, um, borrowed the ACS patients, about a thousand of the patients who were in that trial came over, and that's what's called stop DAP2 ACS. Here, uh, they're presenting the total cohort which I think culminates into a very large numbers of patients, obviously. And um, for the most part, uh, they're showing um, that for the entire cohort, uh, which comes to about 6,000 patients, um, 3,000 in one month DAP, uh, uh, 3,000 in 12 months of DAP, but the one month DAP patients get clopidogrel monotherapy, showing non-inferiority in terms of cardiovascular death, MI, stroke, and Timmy major minor bleeding. Uh, and I think that's, you know, when you look at the, the entire population of 6,000 patients, I think that's quite good. Um, and um, the only uh, uh, issue that they did find is that in the ACS patients, maybe clopidogrel monotherapy would not do extremely well. And Timmy major minor bleeds obviously were reduced with uh, going to a um, single antiplatelet therapy, as you would expect. But, but MI was higher there. And MI was, so, yes, and MI was higher in the ACS patient population. So, George, what did you make of these presentations from the stop DAP? Well, I, I mean, I think it, it isolates the higher bleeding risk patient. It isolates the ACS patient, I think, in terms of risk. I, I think the definitions of what is a high risk patient and how one makes a decision about that is, is so. Uh, maybe more complex, and I'm not quite sure they really deal with that here. So I, I guess my, uh, in, in interpreting the data or how I, would, uh, how I would use it, is I would focus more on the results related to high bleeding risk and um, patients with ACS in, in, in particular as being uh, targets for considering. I, I'm not quite sure I know what to do with complex PCI. Great. Well, those are wonderful perspectives. Well, I'd like to thank you both for helping wrap up day two of TCT. Hopefully, uh, for our audience, these were interesting perspectives. I found them interesting. And for further coverage, please tune to acc.org.